Captain Mac, the free character you're able to get during the 5th anniversary event, and the real star of it all, you're able to max out his star level just by farming the event. He's a pretty solid character, a support DPS who can buff up everyone's attack, so if you're new, he can prove himself to be quite useful if you don't have a faction buffer. So if you guys are interested on how to build him and want to see what he's all about, then let's go ahead and check him out. His talent windows allies within 3 blocks, his attack increases. After taking action, he can choose to apply a rot marker to the target location. This train is a command effect where after friendly units within 2 blocks take action, they recover 15% of their HP, and when non-flying allies pass through the terrain within 2 blocks, they have a chance to mitigate 1 block of mobility reduction for 1 turn, and the cooldown of it can trigger it again after 1 turn. So most of his support will come off from his special terrain, plus you can get a bit more with his passive skill. With another big skill that increases attack and int, while also being able to apply water movement too. You do have to be relatively close to it, which isn't that much of an issue since he can spam his train quite often. His best class would be Aquatic, which gives him better survivability, and his skills help complement that. Like for example, Tidal Surge, which puts him in water. And any Aquatic units in water gets a 30% defense boost. His infantry lets him hit a bit harder, but that means you can't use Tidal Surge, unless he's using Aquatic Soldiers. And that also means is that you don't get a defense bonus too in that class. If you try to use Tidal Surge in that class without any Aquatic Soldiers, then he screws himself over. So I highly recommend going to his Aquatic class. For the class Mastery Stones, you want HP, Attack, and Defense all across the board. Since he's going to be a really slow character, you want him to survive stuff. Headway, you can do Magic Defense instead. Weapon and Accessory, you can do Skill with some damage potential. Arena Stones, if you guys really care about this, then you're going to want a defensive set like mine. If you only care about damage, then an offensive set. Something balanced I would say would be HP, Attack, Defense, Crit Up, and Crit Damage Up. One of his best soldiers would be the Duelist. They're going to be his best attacking soldiers due to the attack and crit up, also having that physical damage reduction if you're lucky. The Lobster are best for surviving as long as you're in water. Lizard are also best for attacking while also being able to move in water pretty easily. Same thing goes with Pirate Raider, but they're more balanced. As long as they're in water, they have damage reduction by 30% and have decent amount of attack increase. The best weapons to use on them are Ragnarok, Bone Crusher, and Molnir. They're going to be best for attacking, Mimir can also do that too, while having sustain power, since you are able to heal when the ally dies. Throne Guardian 2 since it does give HP, which could be something like a last option to think about. In his infantry, if you guys are really considering using him in that class, you can still use Bone Crusher and Mimir, but anything to help increase attack and something else too like the Sealed Guardian that gives attack and defense. For the armor, you want last right. Alliance Rope is not a bad idea since it does give a good chunk of defense and magic defense as long as you're not in mixed forces. Then it's a legend if you don't have those two, then the demon lizard skin as your last best bet. In its infantry, forbidden battle armor or even time at, which will be quite useful since if you're going to use aquatic soldiers, you can still move freely on water. If not, then Aeolus would be the next best thing, or bloodline if you don't have that one. For the best helmet, the flower for extra healing, better crown for more defense and magic defense only if his HP is higher. In regular content, I would recommend it if you're going against bosses. King's Crown is nice to give an ally more damage, or Snow Beanie for more defense that also gives HP too, to help survive. Then you got Tear for more damage, or Aeneas for some defensive stats if you got him in infantry. With this accessory, I would really recommend Apex Boots since his mobility sucks. But if you want more damage, Judge Talisman, Prisoners, Slayers will be fine. Or something bulky would be Swordsmith to be immune to silence so he can use his towels. Then you can use Overlords for stat immunity, or Ring and Shin Guard for the defense. Then for his enchant, you want Breeze since the mobility is trash. The type of stats that you want on your enchant will be HP, Attack, and Defense. But normally, if you have a high enough HP attack value, then that's fine since it'll be a lot of investments. Alright, so hopefully you guys have a good idea on how to build your Captain Mag. So to anyone struggling with the first Awakening stage, let's go ahead and get to it. Alright, so for this stage, you're going to be up against Sissy White, Juggler, and Knight of Mystery. For the skills that you want to bring, either his passive which gives him a random buff, you are able to get some powerful buffs like extra healing, but his tower can already do that, and it also requires some RNG too. If you don't really care about this one, then attack pick is fine. Tidal Surge is something that you really want for the at the gen. If you got him in infantry, just make sure that you're using aquatic soldiers so that you can still move around pretty easily. Then you want Air Slash. For the best soldiers, it will be either the Pirate Raider, which will help you take less damage and do a decent amount of damage if in water, or the Lizard Man, deal lots of damage. Alright guys, so I am a little bit sick right now, so my voice may sound a little bit off in my pronunciation as well. But to deal with Sissy White, I would recommend just trying to go up to her, because once she reaches 2 coins, She'll always use Bounty on you, which will give you a 10% damage increase. 
So if your Captain Mac isn't like built for surviving stuff, then just get rid of Sissy White. There is also a trick that you can normally do, but Sissy White just doesn't do it. It's like a thing with the summons, that you kill him, you get a buff, but Sissy White never does that, because she always uses her bounty skill. Luckily it doesn't stack though, but just get rid of her before she can do anything. Now to deal with Juggler, he can be pretty scary, because B-Shot can do a ton of damage to you. So just mess around with Captain Mac's uh, towel thing, and then go to the defensive towel on the left or right. Okay, so right here is really good, and I'm gonna use Tidal Surge to get rid of the defense debuff on Captain Mac, and may as well place the towel effect too for the extra buff, and right now we're sitting pretty good, basically a 60% defense increase. So then go ahead and attack Juggler, and didn't really need to do all of that since it's just one shots, but for you guys, you might need it. Now with Night Mystery, you're gonna be forced to take her AoE, because that thing has a massive range. Uh, she doesn't do it for some reason, I don't know why she didn't do it. Captain Mech is clearly in range, I don't know why she didn't do it. That's really weird, what the heck? But uh, yeah, so... Um... Just attack, I guess? Doesn't one shot. Or... Okay, yeah, it's, there we go. Now she wants to do it for some reason. So yeah, if Night Mystery does that, then use Captain Max Towel. Because remember, if you read his talent, it does give 15% healing if within 2 blocks of it. So you may have to turn stall like a little bit right there for that extra healing if you need it. And then simply Air Slasher, and that should be it. But yeah, I really got lucky right there, even though I didn't really need it, since I could have waited one turn to one shot her anyways. Yeah, I don't know why that happened. Really interesting. Now with this 3C, a 3 turn cooldown. The passive on it, defense is increased when in water. This thing is a single target before battle, still is too buff from the enemy, and after battle, teleports himself to any block within 2 blocks of the friendly route marker. And when he kills an enemy, the cooldown is reduced by 2 turns. So uh, yeah, definitely liking the teleportation. So you can basically use this 3C like a hit and run thing like with Cressia's 3C. So yeah, I feel like that's how you should really use this. Alright, so if you guys are interested, this is what his 3C animation looks like. Hey, okay. Wait, I just realized. His name is Captain Mac, but his eye patch has a J on it. And if you guys don't know in CN, his name is Captain Jack. So yeah, I don't know why Global changed it to Captain Mac if they're gonna have something like that on his design. Alright, so if you guys are new around here, Typically, with how second awakening stages work, I don't ever show them off unless they're like really difficult to do, which 90% of the time, they really aren't. Because you do get 3 other characters that you can control, and they're really reliable. Just as long as you're playing it really smart, you're able to make the right decisions where the AIs were not. So with that being said, let's go right on into his showcase. Alright, so let's take a look at Captain Mac once more. His talent, when there's allies within 3 blocks of him, his attack increases. After taking action, he can choose to apply a route marker to the target location. This terrain gives a command effect where after friendly units within 2 blocks take action, they recover 50% of their HP and when non-flying allies move past through the terrain within 2 blocks a bit, they're able to mitigate 1 block of mobility reduction for 1 turn. And this thing has a cooldown effect. So the attack increase, pretty simple but if you guys want to see for yourself, Captain Mac is nearby all of his teammates with 1600 attack. And so if I go ahead and put Captain Mac away from his teammates, now all of a sudden he has 1278 attack. So just make sure that you do your spacing right if you want that chunk of attack. And now the main part about Captain Mac is his terrain. Now I'm still a little bit sick so sorry if my voice sounds a little bit weird. But yeah, after ending his turn, you're able to place his terrain within 3 blocks around him. So if I do it somewhere like within, let's say, 1 block of him, and if I go ahead and check the buffs, it'll show the command effects. So after taking action, you're able to heal. And then we check out his mobility now, rather than be able to move 3 blocks, he's able to move 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 blocks. As long as you're able to move within 2 blocks of it, you will be able to move next to a block. So we're going to count, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So anyone is able to get that extra mobility, as long as the mobility isn't considered flying. With Captain Max's unique 1C skill, it's going to be a command effect where if any ally ends their turn near the route marker, they're able to get a random buff. So I'm sure you saw earlier, so just simply place down the towel, and now if we go ahead and check out the mag, and you are able to get some powerful buffs too. And Angelina's turn, and she got an immunity buff. Pretty good, pretty good. So yeah, there's going to be a variety of buffs that you can get. With this unique 2C, as a 3 turn cooldown, when using this skill, you're able to give an attack and int buff for 4 turns, and if you're near the route marker, you will also get water movement for 4 turns. Now the range on this does really suck, at 3 block range. And another thing about the water movement, it is very strict. Let me show you. So yeah, you can see that these cavalry can move freely in water. And if you go ahead and check the buffs, we got the attack increase and the unique buff, where you're able to move in water. 
However though, if we go ahead and check the cavalry right here, yeah, he can easily move in water though. But if we go ahead and end this turn on it, now all of a sudden, he's able to move freely. So yeah, this buff will only work if you're already in water. Which is really dumb, I hate that. I hate that so much. Like, yeah, he's a free character, but I mean, like, it would have been really nice, you know? <laughs> like, why not just give it to him? And then finally, with this 3C, a 3 turn cooldown. The pass upon it, your defense just increases when in water, standard stuff. This thing is a single target. Before battle, you're able to steal 2 buff from the enemy, and then after battle, you are able to teleport within 2 blocks of its special terrain. Then when he kills an enemy, the cooldown is reduced by 2 turns. So it's going to be the same idea of how you want to use Precious 3C, more of a hit and run thing. So we do take a look at Captain Max stat, you do see the defense be increased since he is in water. And then we're going to check Ellen's buff real quick, he's got some pretty good ones that I want to steal. So let's have Captain Max steal some, yeah? Oh my goodness, he almost died. Okay. Oh, oops. Oh, um, I didn't mean to do that. He teleported right in front of Elwyn right there. But yeah, going back, you are able to play really safe with that skill. And then we go ahead and check the buff now. He got the healing and the uh, attack conversion. So yeah, he was able to steal those from Elwyn. But Percy is a lot more better though, when it comes to that like hit and run idea. Because Percy can have her 3C back and is able to have the HP that she had before she made the attack. And you are able to hit from two blocks. Even though they have the same idea, Captain Max 3C is pretty risky. I kind of wish that he's able to attack from two blocks with it, because it is going to be really hard to actually use it. So yeah, you may run his 3C from time to time in some situations that you may not, due to the wide selection of his skill set. So overall, Captain Max is a really solid character, one of the better free characters that we had in a long while, since he isn't just all about damage. He's a support DPS that wants to stay very close to his teammates to provide those buffs, especially with the 2C for the attack and int buff. That's one thing that really sucks when it comes to using him. He does have good physical survivability and can help somewhat with mobility too since his tiles lets you mitigate an extra block just as long as you're able to move within 2 blocks of it, it'll help you out a tiny bit. Captain Mech is going to be a really slow character that encourages you to play around him. I still wish that his 3C lets you attack from 2 blocks. I feel like it would have made this skill a lot more worth it to carry since it'll be more safer. Picking his skill set can be pretty tricky sometimes, especially like let's say PvP. You can do 3 2C skills where title search is something that you really want to always carry for the act again, and then maybe something like air slash and his unique one to buff his teammates. Still though, he's not a bad character overall, just that his performance may be a little bit underwhelming. So there you guys have it, that was Captain Max Showcase, a very solid character to use. In regular content, he can be alright, if you don't have a decent attacker or maybe even a faction buffer, he can fill in those roles. In PvP, you're more than likely to depend on the support than him being able to actually like attack anyone, which other characters can do but better. But if you really are considering using him, then I would say like a tank push maybe, or especially a total box. As a character whose teammates want to play around him, that's where he's going to have more usage. But that's all I got for you guys. If you guys did enjoy this video, feel free to leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more, and feel free to let me know down in the comments how you guys feel about Captain Mac or if there was anything else that I may have missed. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Your fellow Z.